Hello everyone and welcome to another video in the mini saga of Wei Yi uh, that we are currently covering. Uh, it is a game from round 8 of the 2013 Reykjavik Open and this is the game uh, that got Wei Yi his Grandmaster title. He already has a rating of 2500 uh, so that's one criteria and the second one uh, of course is reaching three Grandmaster norms and here he is uh, on the hunt for his third norm. And uh, on the other side of the board is a uh, 2700 player 22 year old uh, Maxim Vachel Agrava, former pro himself and uh, one of the uh, strongest players in the world um, yeah you know in, in 2013 if you were uh, about 2700 you you know that you were extremely strong and um, yeah uh, le let's check it out and it's a bit of a different uh, approach than uh, you you've seen in the previous games that we've shown by Wei Yi here it will be Maxim who's on the attack because uh, we've already shown a couple of Wei Yi games where he faces the Sicilian defense and he just uh, dismantles it completely. Like you, you, you just don't play the Sicilian defense against Wei Yi. However, here he plays uh, against uh, we could argue the absolute best player of the Sicilian defense in the world, and that is Maxim Vachel Agrav. Okay, you could maybe argue that Magnus is better because Magnus is the best at everything. But um, uh, you know, when it comes to the theory of the of the Sicilian. I'm I'm still guessing MVL uh, is the is the absolute best, or, or at least that's his reputation. So uh, let's check it out, uh, and uh, yeah, we, we'll see what happens. So uh, you know that uh, Wei Yi is the youngest ever 2600 player. He's the youngest ever 2700 player, and when he became a grandmaster, he was the youngest grandmaster uh, in the world at the time. He was not the the youngest grandmaster ever uh, at the time he got his title. He was the fourth youngest grandmaster ever, but you know, at least for a while, uh, he was the youngest ever in the world. So let's check it out. Uh, Wei Yi opens with e4 as he usually does and we have pawn to c5. Maxim goes for the Sicilian defense. Knight f3, knight to c6 and bishop to b5. He goes for the Nijmedin of uh, Rosolimo attack. Uh, d6 and now castles. We have bishop to d7 and now rook to e1 uh, followed by knight to f6, c3 uh, and pawn to a6. So nothing new here uh, even in 2013. This was all very well known. Bishop back to f1. Now okay, white uh, wasted a tempo with the bishop so black can do uh, the same bishop to g4 d4 finally opening up the center c capture c captures and now usually d5 or e5 are played maxim goes for pawn to e5 d5 and knight to d4 uh, even allowing this um, attack on the pin piece but way he doesn't care he just plays bishop to e3 and okay maxim will mess up his pawn structure in front of the king knight captures on f3 we have g captures and bishop back to d7 followed by Pawn to a4. Here, uh, even in 2013, uh, the position has been reached before. No moves were knight to d2, knight to a3, pawn to a4. Knight to c3, not so much because, well, you just don't have all that many squares for your knight. Maybe, okay, later on you can maybe shift it to g3 with some f5, a h5 uh, action. But, uh, yeah, it's, no one played it. So pawn to a4, this makes sense. You want to stop pawn to b5. Uh, and maybe even uh, grab more space with pawn to a5. So here we have knight to h5. Now there are uh, even today 12 games in the database where bishop to e7 is played and this is the top move recommended by the engine. But here we have knight to h5 by Maxim. Uh, today it's the second move rec top move recommended by the engine and it is now as of move thir 13 that this position has never been reached again. So now we have uh, a unique game, uh, if you will. So, okay, how is Wei Yi to continue? Maxim obviously says that, okay, he plans to put a knight on f4, he might play pawn to f5, he might bring the queen to h4. Uh, he wants to attack, maybe some g5, g4 action to open up the g5 for the rook. So, he wants to play an attacking game. How will Wei Yi continue? He plays queen to b3. He says, all right, I, I'm just going to grab a pawn here. That's, that's what I'm planning here. And uh, if Maxim wanted, he could just play, let's say, bishop to e7, Wei Yi captures, he castles and okay nothing really happening here it's a fine position for both white and black um uh you know uh de definitely white is up uh, in material you know he's up a pawn but he does have the the messed up pawn structure in front of the king so you know it's it's a trade-off however after this uh queen to b3 move maxim played pawn to g5 he wants to attack the white king right away and now okay you've seen Wei Yi attacking now let's see how Wei Yi defends well he defends by attacking queen captures on b7 now he's saying okay if the the queen ever moves i can capture the rook so you have to do something about that and maxim says all right i actually wanted you to capture the b7 pawn because now I get my rook to b2 and then I will have two rooks attacking the white king. 
uh, once this rook reaches the b2 square. Uh, but not right away. First, we have rook to g8, and now we have knight to d2. Okay, continuing development. Uh, pawn to g4. Opening up the g file, f captures on g4, and now first rook to b8, attacking the white queen. And the way he has to decide whether he wants to move back with something like queen to a7, or he wants to grab the pawn. Well, uh, you do have a pawn on a4, so it makes sense uh, to create a pass pawn here, which is what he does. Now, rook captures captures on g4 with check. We have king to h1 and now pawn to f5. Maxime says, I'm 200 uh, rating points, um, uh, you know, higher rated than you. I can I can do whatever I want. I can force uh, matters here. Uh, e captures on f5 and now rook captures on b2. And now, okay, you have the uh, the knight here, the two rooks are going sort of after the, the white king, maybe the queen can come to h4, maybe some somehow you, you pick up the pawn, get the bishop into the game, uh, many possibilities here. So here we have bishop to e2, putting pressure on the rook, and Maxim doesn't care, he just plays knight to f6, he wants the, uh, he wants Wei Yi to capture the rook, because if the rook is captured, then he gets a knight on g4, maybe the queen comes into the game. Uh, objectively, it doesn't work, but whenever you play against Maxim, it doesn't matter what uh, the objective reality is, uh, Maxime will, you know, f <laughs> make you uh, uh, m make a mistake. So instead, after knight to f6, knight to c4 first, going after the other rook as well. And now, okay, two of Maxime's rooks are hanging, and he sacrifices one. Rook captures an e2, sacrifices the exchange. Rook captures an e2, and now bishop captures an f5. Now, if Maxime gets bishop to e4 check in, it's game over with the rook covering the g file. Uh, Wei Yi's king will either, either get checkmated or he will suffer a severe material loss. So he has to play f3. Uh, you have to block this diagonal, and now rook back to g6 and rook to g1. Now he counters Maxime's rook on the g file, and uh, well, things are not looking great for Maxime. Uh, the, the attack has stopped, and he is down a pawn. Uh, but okay, king to f7, uh, now comes rook captures on g6, h captures, and now bishop to g5. Just uh, pinning the knight here, and uh, threatening to trade down even further. Wei Yi is up a pawn, he wants to push his pass pawn, and that's how he plans to take down a 2700 player. We have bishop to e7, and now just bishop captures on f6. Point being that if bishop captures, the d6 pawn is undefended, and if king captures, now of course you play knight captures on e5. Uh, this is how Wei Yi breaks through. Uh, the d pawn is pinned, of course, d captures on e5 is impossible, and the uh, king, of course, cannot capture as the rook is defending the knight on e5. So queen to b8, uh, trying to get the queen into the attack, do some damage this way, uh, now comes knight to g4 with check, and now king to g5 even, giving up the bishop um, uh, on e7, uh, but still it won't do him any good. The rook captures on e7 was played, he does get his queen to b1 check, King to g2 and bishop to d3, attacking the queen and preparing queen to f1 with check with a potential deadly king hunt, but here Wei Yi just played queen to a7, and he was in this position on move 33 that Maxime Vachielagra resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. The problem is, uh, after you give one check, it doesn't really, really matter with, uh, what with, uh, for example, queen to f1 check, king to g3, there are no more checks, the queen is covering the dark squares, the rook is covering the e1 square, there are no more checks, and whatever you play, let's say you play something, because, okay, you, you have to make a move, uh, it's a mate, mate into queen to e3 with checking h5, and rook to h7 uh, will be checkmate, and it doesn't matter what you play after queen to a7, uh, everything uh, ends in, uh, in, a, in a fairly quick checkmate. Uh, so yeah, uh, brilliant stuff by Wei Yi, you've seen him attack, you've seen him defend, you've seen him uh, defend while attacking, and uh, I mean, just uh, incredible, incredible stuff. Uh, he becomes the youngest uh, ever uh, Grandmaster, N not youngest ever Grandmaster, but he becomes a Grandmaster, uh, and he was the youngest Grandmaster in the world at the time. Uh, youngest 2600 player, youngest 2700 player ever, just, you know, break, you know, shattering records, then he takes a five-year break. Uh, and you know, just uh, finishes college, and then he comes back and wins uh, wins Tata Steel against the absolute best players in the world. So yeah, that's way for uh, for you, uh, incredibly incredible player. And I did mention that I will show you the standings after uh, the tournament. So these are the standings. I think some 230 players played this event. Uh, uh, with eight points, uh, for, uh, first place goes to Pavel Yanov, Wesley and Basim Amin, but already with seven and a half points, Anish Giri, Ivan Ceparinov, uh, and there you have it, Wei Yi.
so he he was uh, an international master playing this tournament team he uh you know achieves such an incredible score of uh, six wins uh three draws and only only one loss yeah incredible stuff here and uh, there's also ding Liren there on uh, on seven and a half and uh i don't know uh someone uh, someone mentioned this somewhere i haven't uh i haven't seen ding say this but uh, supposedly, when they asked Ding Liren about Wei Yi, he said that uh, for the moment Ding is Ding is the no number one um, uh, Chinese player, but it's only a matter of time before Wei Yi overtakes him. So you know, there, there probably might be something there. Uh, again, who knows? Wei Yi did took a five-year break. Uh, we'll, we'll see if uh, w what happens now when he when he's back and if he fully commits the chess, uh, what he is um, uh, able to do. Uh, and yeah, also, if you guys would like, uh, the quote above the board is from an interview uh, that I will share. It's the first link in the description below, a short interview with uh, Wei Yi. Not, not sure if it's after this game or after the Reykjavik Open 2013 altogether, because this is round eight and nine rounds were played. But still, he is asked uh, about this game and who is his favorite player. He said that Magnus Carlsen is his favorite player because he is so strong. And this was um, uh, before Magnus became world champion. The, the, the interview was in, in February. Uh, of 2013 and Magnus became a champion in November or December of, of 2013 when he defeated Vishwanathan Anand. So we, uh, you know, had a hunch that Magnus will become the, the, the world champion, as did everyone else, most likely. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, uh, I would like to thank Samuel Kane, Gerhard Henkelmann, uh, Jeremy uh, Antifos, uh, Carl Weinberg, and David Gasparian for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos. Sarah, thank you for watching, and I will see you soon uh, with uh, a very special surprise. Uh, a Daniil Dubov game uh, is incoming. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.